The pastor in Nigeria who brought feet washing is, 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 is Oyedepo. We now stop it. He, he brought feet washing to the church. In case he's your deity, don't get offended. Open your ear and listen to me. I have washed people's feet before. I did it when I went. I came back from Oyedepo's school. So he taught us how to wash people's feet. I've done that until God stopped me. Let me ask you a question this morning. What would you do if you knew that you had 24 hours to live? What would you do in those final hours of your life? What would be on your bucket list if you knew that you had just another 24 hours? On my bucket list, there'd be a sort of a, a whole load of things. One thing might be to go and run with the bulls in Spain. That's something that I've always wanted to do. I might visit a city that I've never visited before. I might get a matching tattoo with my sons. They're trying to convince me to do that. I might gather my friends and my family for a, for a last meal together where we would share stories with each other. What would you do if you had 24 hours to live? It's one of the most incredible acts of humility in all the Gospels, and it's not the Lord's Supper. It's when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Now for many, this act from the Gospel of John is revolutionary. At first read, it seems the disciples should be washing Jesus' feet, but as is often the case, Jesus turns the meaning of service upside down. Jesus washing his disciples' feet on this episode of Chuck Knows. It's a compliment of the season. For those of you who celebrated Christmas, I want to say Merry Christmas. And if you have not watched the video I did, as it has to do with Christmas, please, you can check it here. There are two. One is from Pastor John MacArthur, and the other one, uh, when I explain certain things, the origin of Christmas and what have you. And remember that whether you're celebrating or not, no one is better because he's celebrating or not celebrating. But the crux of the matter is that you should be sure of what you are celebrating. God bless you, as I want to also say in advance and in anticipation of a very good life. Happy and prosperous new year ahead. And so this video um, might be a bit long and I want to implore that you watch, please. It is not the kind of video that um, generates some interest, so you can help to share. I, some years back, I got to know that there are some churches that do observe feet washing and I never paid interest, I never showed interest in it because... I was looking at it, even though that it sounded strange that some churches are, you know, actually doing that. But then it becomes worrisome because I started seeing some things that have been attached to it. There are several videos I'm going to play here, both of pastors, Pastor um, uh, Bishop David Oyedeko, Pastor Takim, uh, Pastor Chuck, a white man, um, and also a, a spiritualist, spiritualist, and one other white pastor. Now, these are... This, this is a discussion that is actually loaded, but you've got to be patient to, in order for you to understand what we're talking about here. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Now, reading from the book of John, chapter 13, and that is where Jesus actually uh, laid this thing down. And even as a, as, as a very tender kid, then I thought I knew the meaning and the implication of the feet washing that Jesus did because he actually explained to them. Peter, for one, misunderstood what Jesus was saying, was trying to do, how be it, you know, in, in a good way because he was surprised. But until Jesus did what he wanted to do, he never explained to them what, what he meant, what he did meant. And so when I started seeing certain things, people talking about other things attached to washing of feet, I became surprised. So let us look at it. Now, he writes it, John chapter 13, verse 4. Now this took place in the upper room when the Lord and his disciples observed the last supper before he was betrayed. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and gathered himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Now this is this was a natural reaction 
from anybody that has a respect for his leader, for his master. It was unnatural for it to be Jesus that was going to wash the disciples' feet. In the culture of the Jews, and even in your own culture, it should be the other way around. Now, we're not talking about parents washing their kids' feet here. We're talking about adults, and adults that have designation. And in this matter, Jesus' designation was that he was the leader. He was the disciple. These were his disciples. And so in the, in the culture of the Jews, it was actually the lesser that does the washing of feet for the superior. But here Jesus was trying to reverse it, yet he had something at heart. All right, so Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he that is clean, he that is washed, needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Now that here typifies that Jesus also washed the feet of Judas. And the washing of Judas's feet was not beneficial to, to him. Now, so when we go down to 11, for he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then your lord and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that then, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth Whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. I just had to read this finish. Now, so, you see, when Jesus came down from, you know, from verse 13, ye call me master and lord, and ye say, well, and you say, well, for so I am, if I then your lord and master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, the question here is, what lesson was Jesus trying to pass here? Now, if we check this, this, uh, this feast here, it was at this feast that the disciples began to question amongst themselves. Who was the, the the greatest? Who was this? And you know, before then, you know, before that time, the mother of John and James, the sons of Zebedee, had come to Jesus and requested that his two sons, her two sons, be placed one at the right and one at the left hand of Jesus. You know, coming to solicit the uh, uh, position for his for her sons. And Jesus said that was not of his to give. And you know, he asked, "Will they be able to drink the cup?" No. So there has been this kind of rift. Between the disciples, this kind of contention, this kind of cold war that normally happens wherever there are humans. And so this was t- taking place. And Jesus, this was the last communion of uh, transaction that Jesus was going to have with them before he was handed over to those that will eventually kill him. And so he, he demonstrated this. And so when I read here, I understood, I would say, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus was just demonstrating how that Instead of waiting to be served, ministers should indeed be servants to the people. If Jesus the Lord could serve, could wash the feet of his servants, he was demonstrating to them how that they should not lord it over the Lord's over the Lord's um, flock. How that they, if they are called ministers, they should actually be, uh, you know, administration literally, indeed, giving service and not waiting to be served. Now, this was what I understood this to be. Jesus was teaching humility. Jesus was teaching how not to over-exaggerate the office that they were going to occupy. Now, you're going to hear the, another angle of the other person, one of the preachers here. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to go into the Gospel of John. We're going to look at Jesus' final hours, his last 24, and see what was on his bucket list and what he chose to do. We're in a series called Walking Away from Jesus, where we're looking at different people and disciples and what they experienced with him and what they were left with as they walked away from Jesus. And the experience that we're going to look at now in these final hours of Jesus's life is really, really impactful. So I'm so excited for you to join with me and to dig into this. It's going to be absolutely awesome. In the Gospel of Luke, we read that Jesus eagerly desired to celebrate the Passover meal with his disciples before he would go on to suffer. 
Jesus knew that in his last 24 hours, he would be suffering and that he would be crucified. And one thing that he wanted to do was gather his disciples, gather his friends, his extended family, and celebrate the Passover together. So he sent his disciples on, they prepared the room, they prepared the meal, and they started to celebrate the Passover together. But it didn't turn out the way Jesus expected. A fight broke out amongst the disciples and they started fighting about who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus had to approach Peter and explain to Peter that Peter was about to disown him three times. We also read that it was at this very meal that the thought came to Judas to betray Jesus. These final hours, this final meal with his disciples wasn't turning out as Jesus expected. How many of us have had a family meal that didn't turn out as we expected? Come on, I see two hands raised right here. There you go. Wow. Jesus, in this moment, I'm sure is frustrated because all he wants to do is receive encouragement, get together with his, with his people before he would go on to experience what he experienced. And in all frustration, it would be totally natural if Jesus would just thump the table and say, you know, I ain't got time for this. Or if he would just walk out of the room and just leave the disciples be and just find a place of solitude for himself. But Jesus does something in this situation that is totally unexpected. Unexpected because he was a rabbi, unexpected because he was a teacher, and unexpected just for those disciples. Jesus gets up, he takes off his outer clothing, he wraps a towel around his waist and he kneels down and he washes the disciples' feet. Something that nobody would have expected Jesus to do. Now we might say here, because we might know a little bit more about Jesus and have been reading the Bible, well, that's the Son of God, that's Jesus. He's a humble guy, he's a humble man. That's what we would expect from him. He humbled himself so that he would even come into this world. Of course, Jesus would do something like that. But there's another twist to this story. There's another perspective, there's another angle to this story of why Jesus got down and served his disciples. And it was also because Jesus knew that if he humbled his heart, he would open up a doorway in his heart for his father to come through with his peace, with his power, so that Jesus could be sustained in the suffering that he was about to go through. He knew that if he just turned away and, and became proud, he wouldn't be able to receive what his father had in store for him. And that is the main point of this message. When you serve other people, God serves you. He knew that if he would serve his disciples, his father in heaven would serve him with all the resources that he needed for what he was about to experience. When you serve someone, God serves you. But then, when I started hearing something like this from Bishop David Oyedeko, I began to ask myself, could it be that there is another meaning to this? Or is it that we are actually, we are actually interpreting the scriptures anyhow we want? Please, don't go away. I'm going to shock you with a video here. God bless you. Oh, yeah. That the part, part three to twelve that the father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside this garment and took a towel and gathered himself and poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was gathered. Then commented it to Simon Peter, thank God for Peter. Peter said, No. No, Lord, does thou wash my feet? <laughs> Jesus answered and said, What I do now, I do. Thou rest not now, but thou shalt understand hereafter. Peter said, I don't want hereafter. Thou shalt never wash my feet. I want to know why you are washing my feet. Jesus answered and said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So, feet washing is a spiritual medium through which our missing parts in Christ are delivered. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And when Peter saw the seriousness on the face of Jesus, he said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, you have come again. And then Jesus told him, 
He that is washed needed not save wash his feet, but is clean every week, and ye are clean, but not all. So it's also a cleansing medium that cleanses all spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Praise God. Somebody's part of healing was delivered as his feet was dipped inside water in the hospital in America during one night of feet washing service like this. He had full-blown blood cancer. He could hardly stand up. He spent all his life in the hospital about 13 months or thereabout. But put his feet in the water and while he was proclaiming the blessings, he slept up. Woke up in the morning and the water was turned to like palm wine. Cancer gone. Forever. Now, that he had the part of healing health and wholeness in Christ, it was delivered through the mystery of feet washing. One woman came here, was pregnant for three years and dipped his feet in water and as he stood up, labor started. Bouncing baby boy who spent extra years in the womb came forth. Amen. Give the Lord praise. <laughs> now, every gospel truth always appears too simple to be true. So don't let any devil deceive you. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. So from today, wherever the soul of this your feet shall tread upon, that shall be given to you. Yeah. Joshua 1, 3. Now, what are the parts that we have in Christ? There are seven of them. Revelation 5 and verse 12. Jesus died and obtained for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Now, watch. As your feet will be washed this morning, you shall be empowered into these levels. Yeah. Wherever you step into, every devil and every agent of the devil will step out of that place. Yeah. Riches. That means we empower your feet to walk in the covenant. Because you can't be empowered for wealth without walking in the covenant. So as your feet will be washed tonight, be empowered afresh in your covenant walk with God. Yeah. Wisdom. Strength. Every weakness, every feebleness around anyone's life, at the instance of this feet washing, you see them no more again forever. Yeah. Remember, he that was with the wise shall be wise. And God, the only wise God. The wisdom to walk with God all the days of your life. Walk in the truth as a lifestyle. Whosoever hear these things of mine and do it, then he's a wise man. Receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Honor. The end has come to every form of shame around your life. Yeah. Whatever makes you hide from your peers drops off your life this morning. Shame and reproach will never be mentioned with your name again. The cure for shame and reproach is glory and honor. And they are your rights in Christ. They are things that accompany salvation. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, the end has come to every form of shame and reproach in your life. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And blessings. Blessing is the cure for curses. As your feet will be washed tonight, 
no trace of curse, enchantment, divination shall ever be seen on your life. Now, when we talk about confusion that is being introduced into the church by bringing in some things that I actually found to be some extra luggage, things that we don't actually need. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I really have seen, you know, power, raw power with, that has nothing to do with all these things and the Spirit of God still moves, you know. So, now, listen to, you have listened to the bishop and what if I tell you that the same thing that bishop said that are the benefits of feet washing are the same thing that this lady who I consider a spiritualist is saying then what would you, how would you pin it? How would you describe it? Now, don't just get angry, please. Let us reason together. I have not come to attack anybody. I came in peace. We are reasoning. So, you've heard Bishop. Now, please listen to this woman. While I'm not trying to be uh, funny here and I'm not trying to be vindictive, but when you heard Bishop there and you listened to this woman reeling out the benefits of feet washing, and they were basically sounding the same. What is your opinion? Let's take a look into the story this morning and let's go to John chapter 13 and let's look at the different ways from this story of how God serves you when you decide not to be frustrated, when you decide not to be angry, when you decide not to be disappointed, when you decide to let go of that hurt, how God can serve you. In John chapter 13, we'll go to the end of the story in verse 15, it reads the following. I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent me, sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now that you know these things, now that you've seen my example, you will be blessed if you do them. If you serve other people, Jesus is saying the Father in heaven will bless you. And that's the first point of this message. If you're taking notes, you can also open up your Seacoast app and you can have, find all the notes in there. The first point is if you serve someone, God gives you his favor. Okay, from what the man said, I think he, he corroborated the same idea that I have. I think I thought I had known. The same thing I believed, I understood that place to mean. Because I never believed that Jesus was prescribing literal washing of feet. Now, when we ask if washing of feet was scriptural, now the fact that it's in the Bible does not make it biblical. The fact that it is contained in the scriptures does not make it, you know, prescribed. Now there is there, there are two ways, there are two things in the Bible. There are some stories of the Bible that are covered. I mean, you know, describing it. So the description of some of the things that took place in the scripture does not mean that those things are prescribed. Now, description is not the same thing as prescription. So the fact that the, the, you know it was captured, how that the Lord washed their feet, and he told them what he did, the literal meaning. He told Peter, don't look at the physical thing that I am doing because you won't understand. What I'm trying to do, you won't understand. But when I am done, then you would understand. And when he finished, he then explained to them the meaning of what he just did. He was teaching them how not to lord, how not to, you know, claim to be lord because eventually, you know, like one of the pastors explained, that when the power of the Holy Ghost was going to come upon them and they would explode in power and in popularity, there is a tendency that they could fall away like some of our, our you know, prophets, mega pastors, mega prophets, have fallen away today because of pride, because of popularity, and what have you, and money. Now, Jesus was trying to drive something home to them, no matter how big you get to. Because at that point in time, they were nowhere near Jesus. They were nowhere near the Lord, but the Lord humbled himself and washed them. So he was indirectly telling them, when I am gone, and when you begin to do greater things than, that, than the one I have done, remember that you are a servant. You are not going to lord it over now, that preacher agreed with what I thought that place meant. But when you heard Bishop Oyedeko reeling out the, the, the benefits of feet washing, and I saw this spiritualist, she has a channel, and the things she put on that channel 
what we, a very big channel, 780,000 subscribers. And you know, people want to get to this place where they tell them what to do in the morning to get money at noon, how to use water and oil and salt to attract favor. So it's a very mighty channel, 780,000 subscribers. But I saw her, you know, talking about feet washing. I took interest and lo and behold, I listened to her this first three minutes and you won't believe it that the same thing that Bishop Oyedeko was saying happens to be what she was saying. Now, having listened to the bishop and you listen to this lady, I'm not trying to bring them together. Now, the truth is that when bishop said that there is miracle, this woman said that there is blessing, Apostle Takin confirmed the same thing, that he also was using this thing and miracle was happening. Now, but the difference here is that the woman was trying to describe a particular way of doing it, oil, uh, olive oil, salt, and water. I didn't wait to get it all because I'm not advertising this. Now, the question here is, the same one that the bishop used, that or the bishop was going to use for them that night, and the one Apostle Takim used, are they special water or the same thing? I think I need to ask Apostle. Because, you know, if a, a spiritualist um, is telling the effect of feet washing, and it was telling or it's agreeing with what the bishop was saying, and partially what Apostle Takim said he was also getting, he was getting results until Jesus came and stopped him. Now we need to look into it whether there was actually a very specific mixture of water, a very kind of different water, the especially of water that must be used, or is it just the ordinary water? Now, for you to understand what I'm saying, now listen to these testimonies that came out. Mine, 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 mine. Hallelujah. Please let's get seated. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, finally, finally, your testimony is here tonight. If you are out there, you have received touch of the Lord during the teaching, during the feet washing, during the praise time. Keep coming to the altar. And get seated, please, those of us who are not coming to the altar. In all of the various locations, zona centers, mission stations, in every place where you are watching this service live, please shut down, take your testimony for five, seven minutes before you get reconnected back to Faith Tabernacle for a prophetic roundup for tonight's service. Amen. Please, uh, here we'll be taking the testimonies right now. Praise the Lord. Kenneth Iguala, wave your hands to Jesus. Pains all over the back for days, and God healed during the faith worship. Samuel Kayode, instant healing of leg pain. The leg pain have been there since yesterday. God healed her during the fourth feet worship. Mrs. Oluashun, sick since yesterday, just managed to be here today, and strength returned immediately after the feet worship. <laughs> Suleiman, I did wave your hands to Jesus. Pain in the leg for three days, healed immediately, three years, healed immediately during the feet worship. <laughs> A day be to say, I've been having itches, heal of itches in the private parts during the faith washing. <laughs> Mrs. Adobo, healed of pain in the nail. For over two years, the pain had been there. Once the feet were dipped in water, pain healed instantly. <laughs> Triumphant Kadri, hallelujah. Pain on a leg for over for about four years healed during the feet washing. <laughs> Ori Stella, I've been for, five, for the past five months there have been movements in the body, but as she came here tonight immediately during the feet washing, God healed. <laughs> Sister Blessing Anthony, I've been having joint pains for about one week. Immediately the feet were washed 
healed by God. Hallelujah. Mr. Joseph Adekoya has been having dysentery and eye pains for, the, for one week, dysentery for one week and eye pain for three months. God healed immediately the fourth washing. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Please, you can go back to the scene. Studio. Let's and she's healed forever. <laughs> Johanna Abigail has had a growth on her body for the past four years. But right after her feet were washed, the growth disappeared and she's healed forever. Are they doing Olomino for 10 years has had migraine, but after her feet were washed, the migraine disappeared and she set free. <laughs> Vivian Omoni for three months has had spinal cord pain, but right after his feet were washed tonight, that pain has gone and he set free. Uchena Blessing, for six years, has had waist pain. But right after her feet were washed tonight, the pain disappeared and she set free forever. Sandra, Mo, Sandra Moha, for the past two years, has had pain in the breast. But after her feet were washed tonight, the pain disappeared and she's free forever. Uju Bano Gabriel, for the past, for many years, from, from childhood, has had one of his ears blocked. But right after his feet were washed tonight, his ears have been unblocked. Samuel Praise, for the past eight years, has had blood sight. But right after the feet were washed tonight, his sight is restored to the glory of God. <laughs> Another favor has had a swelling on the thumb, but right after her feet were washed, the swelling disappeared and now set free to the glory of God. <laughs> Abimbola for the past eight years, has been having strange voices continuously. But right after the feet were washed, that strange voice ceased and now set free to the glory of God. Shall we all rise? So now, when, when uh, Bishop Abioye made that announcement of the, the testimony time, he talked about teaching, he talked about washing of water, he talked about praise worship. These were the three instances in the service that miracles were supposed to take place. But you could listen and see that not the teaching brought the miracle, not the praise singing brought the miracle. All of the testimonies that you heard, all of them occurred during and after the washing of feet. So the question now is, did Jesus stipulate that we should literally wash people's feet? I will leave you to answer this question. Well, anyway, this pastor said you should ask your pastor because I don't really know who. As I play this little part of Apostle Takim's uh, interjection to this for you, it is little part of it. If you want to watch the full video of Apostle's you know, um, reaction to all this, how that he was using it and Jesus intervened and asked him to stop and every other thing you need to hear about it, please check in the channel. God bless you. You see, I've not, I've not said anything, but all I said here, is that I only understood feet washing that was done by Jesus as description. And the, the prescription that Jesus gave was the impact, the, the, the import, the meaning of what he did. He never said people should go and begin to carry water to wash people's feet. I looked at the, the mammoth crowd at Canaan land and I was like, who will all this one's feet be washed? How many pastors, how many leaders, how did they even do it to wash everyone's feet in, 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 that, in that night program? Well, it was done. 
it was done. And doing it that way now, you see, even if they wanted to replicate what Jesus did, it defeated the purpose because Jesus did not delegate it to other you know, senior apostles. He did it himself. So I guess the bishop should have been the one that should have watched the feet of all those members. Don't get angry with me. I have not insulted the bishop, but this is very, very strange. Now, getting results from this thing, that, you, that results you are get, gotten from it doesn't make it right. That people got you know, miracles from it doesn't make it right. That is the way that Jesus behaves. Jesus looks at the faith of the people, and Jesus still wants to prove to the people that he is still Lord. And so he walks with them according to their own understanding and their faith. And the fact that he followed this process does not mean that this process is worthy. But he just had to do what he had to do because he cannot deny himself. And this is just the truth. Well, anyway, let's know what you think about the video in the comment section. Thank you so much and God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but don't forget to check the link for the reaction of Apostle Takin over this, the full length of the video in the channel. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Tell them from me to you. Shalom. The pastor in Nigeria who brought fit washing is, is, is Oyedeko. We now stop it. He, he brought fit washing to the church. In case he's your deity, don't get offended. Open your ear and listen to me. I have washed people's feet before. I did it when I went, I came back from Oyedeko's school. So he taught us how to wash people's feet. I've done that until God stopped me. I took it from Oyedeko's Bible school. And Christ came and took it away from me. I washed people's feet in the church. They were healed. I thought that was it. I never knew that I was touching other realms. Christ never instituted it for Christians to practice. Funny enough, even though that people are stupid, funny enough, he explained it in the Bible by himself. How can Jesus demonstrate something and still tell you the meaning and you go and get other meanings from it? How can Jesus have already explained the meaning of feet washing? And you now go and start carrying it and say it's the ordinance of Christ. You begin to wash people's feet physically. It is called initiation. Do you know how many Christians have been initiated into the spirit of lawlessness through feet washing, through holy communion? They have been initiated into the spirit of lawlessness through feet washing. Do you know that in the occult, they initiate people into the demonic by washing their feet? They have been so-called spiritual fathers who want to make people their spiritual sons by washing their feet. They are initiating you. People are stupid. If people like Oyedeko and they don't come out and apologize to the church for teaching them how to wash their feet, if they die that way, if they make heaven, there will be no reward. Because with their own hands, they have destroyed their labors. If you are listening to all these men that you have placed beyond biblical correction, you will never understand that feet washing is not a doctrine of Christ. That's why you see the disciples never wash anybody's feet. That's why I said feet washing is not an ordinance of Christ. The best way to teach people humility is to demonstrate it as a leader. All these bishops that are washing their feet, your feet, are their servant leaders. These are ancients of days working with the, the, the Bible called the necklace of pride and arrogance. They have no respect for human lives. But they could appear humbly and speak quietly. Not like me that you shout, hey, hey, hey. But they treat people like insects. Nobody's on value. You, you can't talk to Papa with, you have to lie down to talk to Papa. The Bible says they have no part in Christ because Jesus never told Peter to lie down to talk to him. So Jesus demonstrated the second, the first dimension. Paul came and demonstrated the second and the third dimension to us without even calling it feet washing. Go and tell those people who are washing your feet. I told you every feet washing is brain washing. So they wash your feet and wash your brain. Tell them they should stop doing that nonsense because this is the real thing. Maybe because I don't have a private jet, you will not listen to me. <laughs> that is not you, Sabi.